Dilcia, we talked earlier about um, why now? Why Christopher and Sam and Amy, like why their stories were important to be told now? And I feel like that's a, a really important part of your job as well as, a, as when you're programming a film festival, that it's not necessarily just about each individual film on its own, but also sort of the body of a film festival. Can you talk about what goes into consideration as you're having, I mean, thousands and thousands of films and series has come to you uh, at the Sundance Film Festival and how you go about sort of building that program? Yeah, that's, um, I mean, I'll be kind of, I'll try to encompass. I know a lot of people are curious and think of Sundance as like a mystery you know, mystery, like mystery <laughs> mystique and magical way that we choose films. But honestly, it goes, um, it really, we make decisions based on the content of the film, the actual film. So even if I knew Sam or Chris before, that really does not matter. I didn't know them before. I, you know, I love their films and that's why um, the films got to play at the festival. But really we're a committee of about 10 to 15 people. Um, and that's, those are the decision makers. And together we go into a room and, and talk about these films for months extensively. We watch these movies not one time, but two times and, and really have a conversations about why it's a right time now, um, what works, what doesn't work, and all of these, and even things that don't work um, for us, to, they're important for us to discuss and be aware of because um, we don't want anything to come out of left field when you know um, people are, are talking about them in, in, the, in, in the world. But to us, it really comes down to the story, what they're trying to, what, what they're trying to say, and, and really um, the passion and authenticity and honesty that these filmmakers bring to the table. And these are ex extremely great examples of, of, of that because they're personal stories and they come from a place of, of reality. Um, and it, really the passion and love for, for their subjects comes through um, in, in, in an artistic way as well. There's so much to talk about in terms of um, film as an art form um, and not only just reporting, you know, Sam could have made a, a, a report that could have been on a news, um, a, a news feed, per, for example, but Sam created a film that's also engaging, entertaining, fun. Um, so there's just so much that that gets that gets talked about in our process. But really, the way we we work is we work year round. Even you know, we just finished the film a month ago, but we are already talking about the next edition. We're already trying to to see some films that are in work in progress stages, and we open submissions in the summer. And that's when we officially start watching. And our process goes on for about a couple of months. We have screeners that help us um, get through some of the films. Um, there are more, uh, the screeners are more of a priority that help us prioritize what we're watching. We try, the programmers try to watch everything, but screeners help us um, in say, you need to watch this immediately because when a film gets to a certain stage, all 10 of us have to watch the film. So it's it's really, you know, to get 10 people in one room to watch a movie is difficult. To get 10 people in one room to talk a movie, talk about movies, it's difficult. So it is it is a, t uh, a time consuming process. But we're really proud of the process because it gives an opportunity for different voices to have an opportunity to speak. Um, it's really the most exciting part of my job, getting to argue and, and, <laughs> and come to a, a room with an argument um, defending um, and supporting a film. But honestly, it's it's just a very complicated process. And we do look about, we do take a step back and look at the program as a whole and see what film, um, what film serves, what what a film serves in the year and in, in, in this program in, or in a certain program. So um, it's a lot of layers, but I think we've made it work and we're really proud of what we've done especially the last couple of years that the, 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 especially, you know, 2020 was the last film festival we had live and we were super proud of that festival. And, you know, the last year we're really proud of what we were able to accomplish with, um, with the circumstances. Um, so Christopher can talk about that, but it was <laughs> an endeavor that was never before um, done. And I think we were able to, to, 
try to keep as much of the soul and essence of Sundance alive. I'm going to um, take a question from the Q&A pod, which I, I anticipate doesn't have a straightforward answer, but uh, Savannah asks, what type of short films do you want to see submitted to Sundance? Uh, you know, I was a shorts programmer before being features programmer for six years, so I love shorts, and shorts are so important to the ecosystem and soul of Sundance as well. Um, we take so much pride in in all the um, the, the films we select. We get about 9,000 submissions. It's our biggest, you know, area of submissions, but that to us is really exciting because we want to see everything. You just really don't know um, if it, you know, if, if your film can get selected. We want films that are, you know, exciting, new, have different stories, are taking old stories and, and you know, using a new take on them. Um, it's, it's really, um, about the passion and love that is put in the film and really that comes out and, and we can see that after watching a thousand films, after watching 2000 films, you really can see the films that are, that stand out. But, um, I think people think because it's 9,000 submissions, my film won't be watched or, you know, it really doesn't, um, matter if I submit, but I really want to say that it, it does matter because the shorts program is um, programmed by only the programmers. We don't have screeners in the shorts um, category. And also once you are submit to Sundance, you get into our database or our system. So we can begin to track your career and um, your progress as a filmmaker. So maybe if you don't get into the first time you submit, we can see that as a filmmaker, you've grown the second time that you submit because we have that track record. So it's really an interesting way to think about submissions is in, we are the first festival of the year. So it can be, you know, something that you do in terms of your trajectory of, of your, your film festival life, starting with Sundance could be part of um, that trajectory. Good strat strategy. Yeah. And, and one thing that's so wonderful about Sundance is sort of the community that's built, not just around the festival itself, but the you know the labs and the events uh, during the festival the the panels and and things where you're actually able to connect with other filmmakers and um you know the film community um to that point sam what does it mean as an independent filmmaker to have your film premiere at sundance you know it's it's complicated right because it's all it's as soon as you and to start taking yourself seriously as a maker that's that's the golden ring that's what you want you know and 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 then you question why do you want it and what does it mean and and what does it allow for you and who are the gatekeepers and are they gatekeepers and it's it's a very complicated thing like anything in our culture right the prize is always confusing um and 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 i think you know i don't think i was the only one to sort of feel like you know if you get into sundance you've made it and then everything all the doors open up for you and that's that's the, that's the one thing that will tell you you're a contender and that you're worthy and it's validating. So, you know, you make one film, you don't get in. You make two films, you don't get in. And so you have to start to think, okay, I can't have this be the only thing that tells me I am I am worthy in the world, you know, because it kind of gets, it comes down to that in terms of your sort of internalized issues, you know, and in, in your interiority and how you're struggling with um, taking up space and making work and, and having a career. So I... After the Kate film, when I, I I really wanted that to screen at Sundance and it didn't get in, and I I, I felt I took it really personally, and I I really <laughs> took it really personally, and I, I I came up with all these theories. It's because I wanted it too much. I told people about it too much, you know. <laughs> you know I and then of course one of my friends was like, "You have absolutely no control over it. It has nothing to do with you wanting it or who you're talking to." My friend Ted told me this, so. But, but it hurt, you know, and it, it made me doubt myself. And so after that, I did a lot of work to realize like that, that can't be the thing that tells me like whether I'm worthy to make work in the world, whether my work is any good, whether there'll be an audience, you know, so I did all that work. And, and I think you have that in that little clip from Sundance where I talked about it. You know, I did all that work. I was so prepared. You know, I was always telling Amy, like, there'll be something else. Like, this is not all we need. We'll still, there'll be other screenings. Try back. You know, and it's true. These other things are really great. Um, you know, and I really was working really hard to convince myself. And, and then, 
you know, we're editing and it's six o'clock on a Thursday and Chaffee, Lauren Chaffee called me and was just like, hey, uh, your film's gonna premiere at Sundance. And I just, like all that work I had done to prepare, like to not, to, it just like went away. Like I just, <laughs> Like I, you know, for, you know, all that, it just, I had chills in my body. I paced up and down the kitchen. I was giggling. I told Chaffee, who I'd only met a handful of times that I loved her. You know, it was just, you know, then, you know, so I was thrilled. And I was also really aware that I had done that work. And also really aware, like, this is great. And I'm, it's going to be great for the film. It's great for our careers. It's great for the trans community to have, we were going to have this incredible premiere screening support. Um, and, and I also was like grounded about it. Like it is not everything. There's still a lot of work to do. There's so many amazing films that aren't going to get in. And, and, you know, so I, I'm glad that I had that background, you know, cause I imagine as like, you know, a 20 year old getting in with your first film that really sets you up, right? Like, I don't know, Christopher, you've been in a few times. Like, I'm wondering like how that sort of changed your lens around it. Like maybe the stakes are even higher. Like, you know, maybe it messes with you even more. And I know Delicia sitting there just being like, oh my God, we have so much control over people's psyche. This is like, <laughs> it's really, you know, I can't it's think of it that way or else I'll break it <laughs> I completely agree with you. And I also, I'm an advocate for so many options and yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I, I if I start to think of individuals then I can't, think of it. <laughs> it's so sad, but it's like what I would, what I do try to say to filmmakers all the time is like, you, it's a both. And you have to hold space for both. Yes. It's great. If you get in and yes, there are these real things that happen if you get in and it is, does not have any implications on who you are and your work in the future of your work and the future of your other projects. Like you have to be able to hold both of those things and, and be able to enjoy that space and be able to move forward if you're not in that space. Um, and like Delicia said, it's so true. If you get in once, that means nothing for your future. Like so many of my friends who've gotten in in the past and maybe even are like best friends of the programmers, their work doesn't get in and they're crushed. And it's, 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 it's a very, very, very fair system. I, I have witnessed over the years. Um, there's no nepotism in the programming, and I really admire the the diligence and and the the boundaries that the programmers have shown. Um, you know, one of the programmers who was there for 26 years, Carolina Bresco, she came on as one of our EPs, and you know, working with her and the amount of knowledge you know that she has from all that work has been just such a gift to be in conversations with. So you know, when Delicia was talking about the most fun is going to that room and talking. Mm -hmm about work like i i would that what an opportunity i would love to be a fly on the wall during those conversations um so yeah that's what you know is complicated because we all have a critique of the world and capitalism and you know who has power and gatekeepers and decision makers um and it felt great and i don't want to deny myself that either christopher i would love actually for you to speak to sam's question i and i, I will pile on that you know sam just brought up a, an interesting part two that I, I want to make sure we touch on and is um, a really important part of what Adobe loves in our partnership with Sundance is mentorship and, and seeking out mentorship and seeking out voices that, that help, you know, you grow your creative voice and help develop what, you know, the story is that you have to tell. Um, and I know for you, you that you went through the labs and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about those experiences. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I, I love Sam's answer. Um, I, I think that as, as a filmmaker, I mean, you know, I, th th this, this was my first film that played at Sundance. I'd, I'd never had a short or another film play there. Um, and, but over the years, I too had had to sort of come to this sort of, or, or sort of come to this sort of Zen state where it's, it doesn't matter, you just have to let go. You just, the only thing I would concentrate on is do I like this movie? You know, like, am I proud of this? Do I like it? And that would be the only goal. Um, because if I started thinking about, will the Sundance programmers like it? It, I mean, I start changing it. I start making decisions that go against my gut. Will the, will the um, you know, I don't know, Berlin or, or, or Rotterdam filmmakers or programmers like this? I start, you know, going against my gut. I, I can't, it, it's almost like I have these stories in my head of what these festivals are, <laughs> and that's totally untrue, by the way. But that's just the stories that I think all those filmmakers have. Um, and uh, if you start listening to those voices, you really get off track. 
And so I think um, it is really smart just to think, you know, um, it's not, it's totally out of your control. Um, and for this particular film, it was a little more difficult because I had gone through the Institute um, and the, the Institute side had supported this film from, they were the first, um, they were the first um, entity to sort of come on and be like, we want to see this movie. You know, we, we believe in you as a filmmaker. We believe in this story and we want to see this get made. And it was so hard to get made, but to always have them, you know, as cheerleaders, supporters, whenever I had, um, you know, a moment of doubt or if, if, if I just needed to, if I felt like I needed to meet someone or I needed a door opened or an introduction, they would always be there to help me um, um, facilitate that. And so they're such huge cheerleaders over the years. And it became this weird thing that I just didn't want to let them down. You know, I felt like, I felt like, um, like, uh, like if I, like, if I don't, if I don't play at the festival that I'm totally just letting all the Institute side down. And, um, and I had this, you know, this dream of like, um, premiering the film and then like seeing all their faces in the audience, you know, all <laughs> orders. And, um, and so, um, it, that, it, that part did make it a little harder, but, um, again, it was just a constant practice of being like, look, just every time I, my mind started going there being like, look, um, maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't happen. The most important thing is just make as good a film as you think you can make. And do you like the film? Like, is it something that you're proud of? Um, and so I just stuck with that. And I was, I mean, I, of course, I was thrilled when we got the call that we were accepted because, um, you know, it just, it's just one of those things just to know that you, your film will have that platform and that folks will, will see it and engage with it in a very real way. Um, it's really, it's really, it's, it's really exciting.